Hi, I'm Hootie McNubbins, a not at all creepy AI lady, and you're watching Techspert Weekly. Now here's your host with the most, unless we're talking about hair, that is. It's Uncle Spurtee. Yum. Techspert Weekly. Thanks, Hootie. And this week we're going to be gazing at balls of the crystal variety and seeing how those Apple 2024 flagship phones are shaping up. Now that iPhone 16 series is expected to launch in September 2024 and cost more than bucking out your mum for a full week. I think it's probably fair to say that Apple's iPhone design has been grown a wee bit still these past few years. I and mean, frankly, if these overpriced blowers were bred, you could use them to hammer in nails. However, if you love nothing more than chucking huge wads of cash at Timmy Cook for his latest pocket pal, then rejoice. Because according to recent internet leaks, apparently Apple is working on a fresh new design for its latest batch of iPhones. And here, in all of its magnificence, is what top predictive blokes on social media reckon the 2024 refresh will look like. So it's... it's basically the iPhone 10 again. I never thought I'd say this, but I'm actually starting to miss Johnny Ive. Technically, I already designed the iPhone 16 about eight years ago. Where's my f***ing royalties, Timmy? Probably should have got AI to do that Johnny Ive voice, actually. And even though we're still in very early stages here, Mac Rumors has apparently already obtained some information on the actual physical build of these 2024 blowers. So you can expect the regular iPhone 16 and the 16 Plus to come packing that same aluminium frame with more titanium action for the pricey Pro siblings. And these leaks reckon that the iPhone 16 and the iPhone 16 Plus are stuck with the same screen sizes as before, 6.1 inches and 6.7 inches respectively. That at least fills my black beaten heart with a wee bit of joy because I do like a compact blower. It's not quite the iPhone mini of course, sadly, but it'll do. And meanwhile, those Pro blowers have apparently bulked up even more. So the iPhone 16 Pro is now a tortoise's testicle under 6.3 inches, while the Pro Max model is almost 6.9 inches in size. So basically, if you opt for the Pro Max, you'll be trying to squeeze something that's roughly the same size as Bristol into your pants every day. That's a problem I have every morning when I get ready. Now that action button from the iPhone 15 Pro Duo should now be stuck on the side of all four iPhone 16 models, so you won't have to spunk up a grand or more for that particular feature. And apparently the iPhone 16s, the whole range of them, will feature a spangly new capacitive button known as the capture button. Whoa. And it's not too much of a stretch to think that that'll have something to do with the camera, potentially helping out with the zoom in, all kinds of different features. Now those iPhone 16 displays are probably a wee bit brighter than before, although I'd really like to see some anti-reflective surfacing to match Samsung's Galaxy S24 Ultra. But apart from that, it's all apparently the same screen tech as before, complete with that familiar floating turd nestled up at the top. But one proper and predictable upgrade for the iPhone 16 series is the brains of the operation. Apparently Apple has developed all new A18 and A18 Pro chips for the 2024 range, rather than just sticking last year's silicon into those non-pro models. And these iPhones all sport some fresh new graphene pants, as well as an upgraded metal shell for the battery to help cool the iPhones down. So here's hoping the iPhone 16 range doesn't get quite as burny as the previous lot. Because seriously, when I was reviewing that iPhone 15 Pro Max, my pants were even hotter than usual. And that's pretty bloody hot. And we've also seen some battery capacity shenanigans leak online, though this appears to be a downgrade for the Plus and the Pro Max, so hopefully it's all a load of bollocks. As for the cameras, well, expect the same 48 megapixel main shooter as before, but the basic 12 meg ultra wide angle sensor has apparently been ripped out and replaced with another 48 meg effort. And as usual, the Pro models will stand out from the bog standard iPhone 16 blowers with a sexy telephoto lens this time offering an upgraded 5x optical zoom. And as if having four different versions of your flagship phone wasn't already slightly confusing, apparently Apple could be adding a fifth member to the family in 2024, imaginatively titled the iPhone 16 Ultra. Apparently this could be powered by a third A18 chipset, the A18 Ultra predictably, and sport an even bigger screen than its siblings, as if almost 7 inches wasn't already stupidly gigantic enough. And of course, we are still the best chunk of a year away from Apple's launch, so there's a very good chance that a lot of these leaks will turn out to be total trouser. We'll find out for sure at that big September event. 
Oh, and to be see, if you're watching, mate, my invite appears to keep getting lost in the post for some weird reason, so maybe this year just get one of your interns to bike it round. And anyway, please do let us know your own personal thoughts on the iPhone 16 series down below. And now it's time for the part of the show that really makes my neural network super moist. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. So we're kicking off this week with Smitchy. You're right, Smitchy, who says, watching this sick on the couch again, have one for me as well, Chris. Oh, bomb. I hope you're feeling uh, better, mate. I mean, somehow I've managed to dodge this latest round of Lurgy and COVID and whatever the hell else is going around. And naturally, I'm going to attribute my good health to the sheer amount of alcohol that I put inside of myself. It's certainly not down to the amount of spinach and kale that I consume. Uh, next up, Toklian39 says, Who is the best tech YouTuber in your opinion and why? After you, I mean, of course. Oh, you. The best tech YouTuber. I mean, it's, that's kind of a tricky one. That's kind of like asking me, like, what's my favourite movie? Actually, no, the answer to that question would, of course, be Porky's 2 the next day. So I guess it's not really like that at all. Got to admit, full disclosure, I don't actually watch much tech stuff on YouTube because I spend all day banging on about the stuff here in this tiny little room so I've kind of had my fill of it by the end of the day and some of my absolute favorites include Basil at Tech Edit, you've got Ben uh, who otherwise goes by Lover of Tech, uh, TK Bay, Wanit, some gadget guy, of course my fellow British c the tech chap, all needless to say far smarter blokes than myself and good value on a night out as well. On the subject of Tom the Tech Chap, uh, DS Regum says, Tech Spurt and Tech Chap should do a collab. What a contrast in personality and style. We did actually talk once about doing some sort of collaborative shenanigans after far too many whiskeys, uh, if I remember. I believe we were going to call it Chap Spurt, um, but that's probably about as far as we actually got. Uh, Sassin Blue says, No! I'm the drop bear guy from Australia who pays for phones with socks. How could you forget me so soon? Um, sorry, fella. Definitely do not take it personally. My memory, not quite what it used to be. And frankly, when I was younger, it was pretty cack as well. I mean, seriously, half the time I forget what I even started banging on about when I'm halfway through a frickin' sentence. I'd probably forget my wife's name if it wasn't scrawled in permanent marker on my inner thigh. Uh, the Pie Man 66 says, please never ever sing again. Yep, fair. I do generally try and avoid singing when I'm out and about in public because I do know that I obviously have the vocal talents of an angry raccoon being slowly crushed inside of a vice. Which then of course makes it pretty ironic when I absolutely murder a song on a YouTube video which is watched by literally thousands of people. Dan9806 says, same on gin. You're not a fan either, that's good. I'm really glad to hear that I'm not the only one who thinks that Jin is the bitter ejaculate from Satan's own throbbing member. And Hello Community simply says, beer. Yeah, good comment. Best so far, in fact. Now, last week we had plenty of hot chat action about the Pixel Fold 2, and of course we've had a few responses. Steven says, I love my chunky boy Pixel Fold, I don't want a tall boy. Uh, it would be a real shame if Google did decide to just conform and put out a foldable that kind of looked like all the other foldables out there. Just make it a wee bit slimmer and not weigh roughly the same as a fully grown Alsatian and I think it'll be a winner. Redstang70 says, well it should be easy for them to improve on the first gen since it was such a piece of utter trash. I think utter trash is perhaps a, a wee bit harsh, just a smidge. Yes, it certainly wasn't anywhere near perfect, quite clunky in some areas, but I kind of see it as like the smartphone equivalent of Jingle All The Way. I mean, it's not a bollocks, sure, but as soon as Arnie starts screaming about his wife's cookies or goes full Terminator on a room full of Santas, just gold. Uh, where are we at? Nicholas Saudi says, I hope they remove those ugly bezels and give it a better processor. Yeah, perfectly fair, and I have heard some rumours that the bezels will be slimmed right down for the Fold 2, and in fact, inside you'll get a selfie cam orifice actually in that display rather than having it shunted onto one of those big chunky bezels up top. And next, Imperator Somnium says, now this looks better than the Porsche Fap phone. Yeah, there's really not much love to spare at all for that on a Magic V2 Porsche edition, which is really interesting because all of the special edition Porsche stuff that Huawei used to do back in the day used to get absolutely spaffed over. But that said, just a decade ago, people used to lose their f***ing minds over stupid sh like an iPad made out of a bit of 
T-Rex arsebone. Maybe we're just a bit more jaded these days or maybe we're actually a wee bit smarter. I reckon probably the first one. And also, right, imagine being the king of the world, the mighty T-Rex, the most powerful and terrifying thing that breathes and shits on land. And then millions of years later, what's your legacy? Just having a bit of your hip bone chiseled away and stuffed inside of some rich prick's iPad so he can run his greasy fingers over you while he watches Love Piss in Ireland. It does make you wonder, actually, if that'll happen to us as well. You know, another million years in the future, you'll find some alien technology constructed from Dwayne The Rock Johnson's pelvic bone. Anyway, I digress. Uh, Rick Guzman says, I recently dug out my beloved Note 9 and almost had a nostalgic cry at the gorgeous lack of camera bump. I almost wish that someone would make a bumpless folding phone with whatever quality camera could be managed in such a device. I'd be willing to accept the megapixel trade-off. And likewise, Fate Has Writer's Block says, The Fold 2 camera bump looks atrocious in that picture. I wish more phones were like the Red Magic 9 Pro with a completely smooth back, no camera bumps. Yeah, that is a glorious arse on the Red Magic 9 Pro, but I do like a bit of a camera bump like on the original Pixel Fold. Somewhere to rest the old pointy finger on, helps with the old one-handed use. Sometimes the old sweary finger, mix it up a bit. Uh, Michael W says, Jesus, the drawstring on your super dry hoodie is thick enough to tie up the Queen Mary. Yeah, it's combination hoodie and makeshift bondage gear all rolled into one. Zenon ZXX says, you should make a Patreon where you post your videos without bleeping out the swear words. I'm pretty sure you'd make a good buck. Hmm, money you say? Well, you know what? As my OnlyFans page was a massive flop in more ways than one, I might actually give that a go. You know, I would really like to do videos on stuff that isn't bloody phones and laptops for a change. So yeah, maybe something like that, like a fresh new channel or a Patreon. Mix it up a wee bit after, what, 16, 17 years of covering tech, however long it's been. Uh, next up, Kikikikikami says, From where can I get the wallpaper which he always uses? Uh, from right here, my bizarrely named buddy. Wall.alphacoders.com Wall.alphacoders.com That's where my wallpapers come from. Wall.alphacoders.com Lord Burke says, Has anyone ever compared you to the Thunderbirds arch-villain The Hud? You know what? Despite many, many years of that segment, which crap celebrity do I look like this week? I think that's actually an original suggestion. And as I say, my memory isn't exactly the most dependable out there, that's for sure. But I mean, yeah, he's a chrome dome with eyebrows like a f***ing pair of mutant caterpillars. So definitely ticks all the boxes. And we are bang out of time, so better make this the last comment for the week. Dermot Smith says, Thoughts on the new Sunderland Till I Die series? Are you related to Michelle Barraclough? Well, i got to say, it was short and sweet, but it was certainly nice to have a, an actual happy ending for a change. Apart from that guy dying, obviously. Of course, we've, uh, we've kind of gone through a, a, a slight bit of turmoil, shall we say. Good old SEFC at the moment, so it's, uh, it's a never-ending story. That thankfully doesn't have any horses drowning in it, but it can be just as depressing. And Michelle Barraclough very possibly related to her in some way. I think, to be honest, pretty much everyone in Sunderland is related to everyone else in Sunderland. We sure do like to breed. Anyway, a massive thank you again to everyone who commented last week. Apologies if we didn't get to yours. Please do scribble whatever you want down there about the iPhone 16 series, whatever is ticking around, and that will noggin of yours. And we'll try and smash our way through as many of those as possible next week. And speaking of next week... Next week, next week, what the f*** is next week? And next week is, of course, MWC, baby! I should already be balls deep in my mission to consume every single Australia dam in the city. That said, there is a lot of work-type shenanigans going on as well. So, for instance, on Sunday, we've got the Xiaomi and the Honor smartphone launches. And that's followed on the Monday by OnePlus, Motorola and Lenovo all doing stuff. And nothing is also plying us tech twats with a hopefully very well stocked bar on the Tuesday where we should get our first intoxicated squid to that nothing phone 2A. I've already done a full Techspert Weekly a look ahead at that one. So definitely go check out that episode for all you need to know. Stay tuned for reviews, unboxings, etc, etc. With all of that new kit should be going live from Sunday, as I say. We'll try and do a few TikToks out there down with the kids. In the meantime, have yourselves a bloody wonderful weekend. And see you next week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.